Hello, everybody. <laughs> it's Thursday evening, and we're going to have some fun tonight. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Painting with me, David R. Becker. So I just got done doing this painting in my class in Libertyville, which I paint on Thursdays. I have a class now we opened up. And so now we're going to be doing this on Thursdays. We usually had done it on Saturday mornings. And so now we're going to be heading to Thursdays at 6.30. Today, we're going to be... So you actually, if you have a glass of wine, that's perfect, you know. <laughs> Saturday mornings, you can't do that. So it's even better. So um, let me just see what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, um, for one, Dillman's. Dillman's, we... Um, I still have that class coming up at the end of this month. Did you sign up for it? Um, all the supplies are provided in that class up at Dillman's. And here, just uh, just really quickly, I'll show you. This is the dates of my watercolor workshop. is June 28th through July 3rd. Um, sign up for that. I'm not sure if it's full or not. Um, I haven't contacted them. I'm going to contact them tomorrow and see what's going on. Um, you can also do the water media workshop, which I did their demonstration last Saturday. Or I did those three acrylics, and that's going to be happening in August. So you can sign up for that. All right, so um, let's get back to our painting because that's what we came here to do. And actually, first I want to, um, let's see, first I want to show you my website here. Because um, people I always ask, where do I go for this? Where do I go for that? Just come to my website at beckerart.net or davidartbecker.com. If you just go here, all the information is here. What I'm going to be painting um, next Thursday. Here is a, a show you right there. That was what I was painting today. And you can pull this off of the website and just download it and um, work from that. And um, anything that's happening or anything that I'm selling is all on my website. So just go here when you want to get something from me or, or even if you wanted to contact me, just go to my website and you can contact me. All right, let's get into this painting here. And so first we'll just show you the supplies we're using for anybody who has never been with me. In my classes, this is the these are the colors I'm using. These are the brushes I'm using. And for drawing, if you're not a good drawer, I use this transfer paper. I do use a little maskoid this tonight. Um, so go ahead and um, use those things um, if you're uh, or if you need to know what those are. Um, I will be painting and I won't be paying attention to the questions probably on the chat. Um, if you do ask some questions, I will get to them later. We are on Facebook um, and that. Uh, we're not on Facebook, we're on uh, YouTube. So hopefully there's somebody out there listening to me right now. And so they <laughs> realize that I'm now on, on the um, YouTube channel. So first things first, let's get into our value study. Our value study is what we have to do when we're doing this um, painting. I was telling my students that um, I did this one really quickly. And I already did this painting already today and um, screwed it up. I'll show you that in a second. But um, I, you have to follow the value the value studies and the value studies are pretty much all the objects, the buildings, the boats, the person, and everything, they're the darks and the rest of it is the light. The water is the light. So if you just follow that, that concept, you'll be fine. You'll be fine with the whole thing. So, um, so here's what we did. I'll just hold this up real quick. Here's what we did this afternoon. And, um, instead of using the colors that were in the photograph, I decided to use my own <laughs> set of colors, which I think was a wrong mistake. So um, I'm going to go more with the colors of the image that um, I have there. And I'm going to just give it a little bit more mood. That was a little bit too, I don't know, the blue orange didn't work as well as I had expected. So we're going to try it a little bit differently. So let's go and start painting, all right? And so here we go. Um, I sketched it out um, beforehand. I actually just had to sketch two out today because I did one in this afternoon in my class. So this one, we are going to do a little bit differently because I already tested the, the waters. And I'm going to go more with um, muted colors and um, more grays than the bright blues and, and make it more of a scene that looks like it's what it is and give it more of a mood. And I will start with the lights to dark. And also, I was talking to my students, the, the tough part about this one, and it, I actually chose a very tough subject matter. And these, these demos I do are more for advanced students or intermediate, you know, you, um, beginners can use it too. I mean, it uh, always helps to um, learn how to do everything and it maybe won't turn out as nice as um, you would like, but it's a, anything you do in painting is great. You just keep on painting, painting, painting. So, um, drawing, you have to get the drawing right. If you don't get this drawing right, the boat will look like it's on a hill. And later on, when we put the reflections in, it'll lay flat. But um, drawing is very important. 
you know, it's very important in the whole thing and the whole scheme of things, drawing is number one. I always say to my students, you have to get this drawing on right. Now these buildings back here, I put in very quickly because I'm not going to do them very detailed. I'm going to go through all of these with a wash and I'm not going to put that much detail in because that's the background and I don't want my eye to go into that area. So I want my eye to come to my center of interest, which is this lady standing here selling these things or rowing them. I did take the engine out because the engine was in the picture. If you look up here, um, you'll see that in the picture, there's an engine right behind her. But in my painting, if you look right here, I want to do this afternoon. It looks kind of funny because it's not so detailed and it looks like a bunch of whatever right behind her. So it doesn't quite look right. And so it's not a photograph. And so I decided to take, and this one, I decided to take the engine out. She's rowing anyway, so she doesn't need the engine. <laughs> so let's go with that, okay? So um, I took it out. And so those things like that, you learn each time you paint something, you know, and even this could be like a sketch for a bigger painting. So, you know, it's always good to try a painting. And, and actually I should have known that in when I did my value study too, that that engine would be kind of weird to have back there, unless I made it really detailed. So anyways, let's get started. And um, I'm using Holbein paints. I did wash out all my um, palettes here this afternoon because it was pretty dirty and um, a lot of greens in my yellow uh, because of the last painting I did, a lot of green in there. So I really did wipe everything out, which I normally don't do, but this time I had to because I really want to get these colors nicely compared to the bright blues I used. So I'm not going to use blue as the water, the color of the water, because it's not, it's not, the sky isn't blue in, in this photo. And it's, it's very light, probably an overcast, or it looks like a sunset actually. So it'd be a warm, a warm like yellow. So I'm gonna wet the whole thing. Now I did put a little mask right on the edge of her so that when you're doing it later on, I can just wipe that off. And she is actually gonna be light right there, but the rest of her is dark. And there are light things on here. I should have probably mask wiped, but I'm just gonna go around them or lift them out later. So I'm just gonna wet the whole surface. Yeah, just wet the whole surface, it's fine all the water because I'm going to get the water done all at once. It's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to get all the water with the reflections and everything done on the first wash. And that um, takes a little skill because you have to learn how to control your watercolor. The pigment, this pigment is like dirt. And so I've got to put it into the water. And once it's in the water, it dissolves, right? And just goes all over. So what we have to do is we have to put a little bit more pigment if we want to stop the pigment from running all over the place. More pigment stops the pigment from running. So I used a little bit of my permanent yellow light and I mixed a little bit of violet lavender into it and kind of graze it down. And I'm gonna make the stream of light coming through here, almost kind of like the lights coming right down that area right there. I'm gonna come right here. Let's see if anybody's watching. Is anybody watching? <laughs> I see Joni, hey Joni, hey Vicky, hey Cindy. Thanks for coming. And so I'm going here and I'm just going to take this yellow, more of a yellow, because if you look in the photo, the actual photo is a little bit more yellow than this blue. I mean, this blue, it doesn't make sense because the blue, the sky wasn't blue. And so it just, it just was not a good one, but it's, you know, it's always good to do. Always try things, try things. And if you fail, that's okay. It's just a sheet of paper, turn it over and do it on the back, do something else. I think the hardest thing was, it was kind of complicated because of all the subject matter and all the things in the painting. I think that was the hardest thing for most of the students that were doing this afternoon. I have a class in Libertyville. Um, uh, it got, got started again today and that happens on Thursdays. Um, it's full, so you don't email me if you can get in right now because you can't. Right now it's filled up with students. And as soon as somebody actually um, tells me that week, but everybody already said I've got two weeks worth of um, students already on that one. So I'll let you know on my newsletter if I got openings and stuff for each one. Now Saturdays, I think I still got some openings on Saturday um, live, you know, coming here to the studio. Of course, if you're not in Illinois and close here, then of course you're not gonna be here. So just keep on watching me here on YouTube. I will be doing this every week on YouTube and it's free. And I, I give you what I'm going to be painting on, on Tuesday in my newsletter. So you just pick those up there or on Facebook. And this will, I will post a link to this on Facebook tomorrow. So those people that only use Facebook and don't use YouTube or they'll see it tomorrow and they can paint it tomorrow too, because it'll be run over again.
So I'm putting a little bit of lavender in the yellow to give it kind of, it kind of makes it kind of greenish, but that's okay. It's, it's a gray, it's a gray and, and the violety um, yellow will just make it like a yellowy gray here. I put even a little bit more red into that violet and see how I'm doing a light to dark because in the photo, that's what it is. And over here, it's a little bit darker. So if I use pure yellow, it would be way too bright. You know, it would just look like, you know, somebody spilled some kind of chemical into this water. So I'm not making the pure yellow. I'm going to mix a little bit of these violets, permanent violet. That's permanent violet. And this is lavender, all whole vine products. And go again, back to, um, back in the video, I, I showed my page there. So just go for that and look at that. And so if I want to make these little waves, I do that with a little bit more pigment. I put a little bit more pigment in my brush with no water in my brush. Hey, Mara. Hey, Jen. I'm going to look up every once in a while. If you do have a question, you know, go put them up there. I'll look up, up every once in a while to see if you have a question. I know there's not going to be as many people like on a Saturday morning because I started new. So it'll be more of a personal class. So you guys can just ask questions. Probably more people will see it tomorrow. Hope everybody got their dinner in. Cheers, everybody. Here, see, in the afternoon, you can you can cheer people on with wine or, or a glass of a glass of or a, or a can of beer or whatever. I haven't done an evening class in a long time, so this is kind of fun. So here, I'm going around with the um, with a little bit of the lavender and the yellow, and maybe a little bit of orange in here too, just to give it a little bit of warmth. And then you notice how I just put, I brush it so it's like these little waves. I just bring it up and, and they're not going to bleed too far. Why? Because I have a lot of pigment and the water is already on the paper. And this is, I'm doing the lights. I'm not doing the darks yet. I'm doing the light area. Remember I said in the very beginning that I'm going to do the lights. So this, the water is the light of the whole picture. And so I'm going to get that done right away with the lights. It's going to be my light part of the, of the drawing of the painting and the, and it's going to be, the waves are all going to be done. By the time I get done, this is all going to be done. Now, reflections in the, in the water are the first off, are the color of the water, just a little bit darker. Then later on, when I get color in here, I'll put that color into the water too. But first and foremost, when you do the reflections, you can do them with the color of the water, just a little bit darker. Especially these up here, I'm just going to go in there and just kind of grab the, the, the mess I already have here and just grab that color because that's what you're using down there. So... It's obvious that you want to use it up on top too. As a matter of fact, I'll make it a little bit more gray because it's farther away and I'll make it a little bit lighter too. And again, this is wet up here. So you got to use a lot of pigment, no water in your brush, just pure pigment. Because when you put it down there, you take and the water will disperse whatever you have on your brush. If you have water here and there, it's just going to bleed all over the place. So here, watch this. I can just go real lightly. Now that's a pure violet. So that's not good. I'm just going to mix a little bit of the yellow with the violet, maybe a little bit of orange. That's permanent orange yellow. And that's brilliant orange. And so I'm just going to go in here with a little thicker paint and just put in a little bit of these reflections. Later on, I can put hard edge ones. These are all going to be soft edge because the paper's wet, right? So when the paper's wet, you get soft edges. And that's okay because you can get soft and hard edges both at the same time later on in the end of the painting and it'll be fine. It'll look great. Here we'll go over here. Put these in here right away. I love having the palette so that you can pick up all those colors that you already use. So it's just, they're there for you. That's why, um, that's why you have a palette. I don't use it so much for mixing. I use it for putting this up down, mix a little bit, and then just go here and just pick it up and put it back onto the, to the paper. Uh, let's see if we get this. And again, we're not doing any darks. We're not doing darks yet. Darks come later. They always come later. I'm just getting my colors. My color scheme is yellow and violets on this one and more grays than I did here. This was blue and orange. This, this one was blue and orange. So this one has a whole different color combination. This one is going to be a little different. The fact that I'm using two different um, colors that are complements. I usually try to use complements. They help each other out. You can go a different direction too. You don't have to go totally those two colors, but you can you can go with other things like I'm putting orange in there too. And I'm just trying to get the water all kind of 
all kind of ripply. Back and forth, just getting the waves. This is the waves, and they're soft edge waves. And it's not bleeding out, again, because I have a lot of pigment in there. And in my photo, it's really dark. See, in, that, in the photo over here, in the photo over here, it got really dark in the corner. It's really dark over here. So I'm not going to use a bright color. I'm not going to use a blue because I'm using yellow because that would make a green. And I don't want green in there. That's why I'm using a purple because that's what dulls down in yellow is a purple, not blue. Blue will make it green. And um, I, I mean, you could use green if you want the, the water to look kind of you know, murky and stuff. That's fine if you're using that as the other thing. But then something up there has to be green too or inside the person there. So it's kind of monochromatic in some ways, but I'm going to try to keep it to the purple. And we're going to have some red and other things in there besides this, these colors. But that, well, I'm not sure this, this was taken, this photograph was taken, I think, um, well, it was taken from me from pixels and I put the name of the photographer, um, on, on the site and, um, I think this may be Thailand or something like that. All right, so I think that's pretty much our water. I'm gonna take my little smaller brush and I get a little bit more details of, and these are all soft edges now, and this is all my lights. This is my lights, and I did get a little bit of the reflection in there that's a little bit darker. But I'm probably gonna go even darker than that later on. But just a few more of the like little waves type of thing here just and again you have to use a lot of pigment don't use water on your brush because that will just may bleed all over the place and you can't control watercolor the first thing i teach my students at like at billman's and stuff is how to control the watercolor and it's actually not hard to teach i teach you by the time you leave you're going to learn how to um control the watercolor so it doesn't run all over the place and floating your pigment is the what way you do it you know you float the pigment into the water and because pigment again is pigment is like sand or dirt and and you put it into water so the more dirt you have the less it's going to bleed all over the place all right so there we have the water i think that's pretty much going to be it for the water let's see maybe i'm going to have a little bit here i kind of scrub right here for some reason with my need rubber eraser when i first started and so you're going to have a little bit of mark right there which is a dumb thing to do don't ever scratch your paper before you start. And that's like, I, I'm not seeing a sheen on there right now, so I'm gonna leave that alone. So if you don't see a sheen, if you don't see it, the sheen anymore, and it's not glossy, then you gotta stop because then the paper is drying. And when the paper's dry, you cannot go with your brush wetter than the surface because you'll get a watermark or a blossom or whatever they call those things, whatever you call them. All right, so that was the lights. And I'll go in there with hard edges later to get some more reflections and maybe put a little bit more color from whatever is there into the water. Now we're going to go into the um, background, into the back. And so I'm going to use a brush. This one's a little bit too big for that, I think. I'm going to use this one a little bit smaller because I do want to get around some of these buildings. And, of course, I'm going to use the color of the, of the buildings don't really matter so much because I have to show aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective into the building. So I'm going to use my violet, which is going to be the opposite. And it's kind of gray. I want a gray. So the grays are fine up there and I can go warm grays, cool grays. And that's all, it's all going to be good. It's just that I cannot put like really bright colors up there because then I have to put really bright colors right here. So I'm going to keep it down. And I noticed that a lot of the artists out there, the, the real big artists, they're using a lot of grays lately and neutral tints and stuff. And so I, I'm going to try that a little bit. So you know, I, I, I could do everything. What I do is I first put down, first put down, let's see. Okay, John asked if I um, wet my palette pigments before I uh, paint. Normally I don't, but today I did because I, I, um, they were really dirty. And so I went and just washed them a little bit so that they, I could see the paint. And so you guys could see the paint too, but normally I don't, normally I don't wet them. Whole bind paints, you don't have to, they, they have, they don't have ox gall in them. And so they don't dry to a hard rock and they instantly rejuvenate with just a little bit of water. Hey, Carol. Hey, Martina. Hey, Anne. Thanks for coming by. 
post cheers 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 <laughs> i like this evening painting Sunday, saturday morning i'm usually not awake enough to <laughs> do anything so here this is fun so here we go down And see, I'm using grays, but this is a warm gray. There's a violet gray. I can use blue grays, cool grays, just the gray. And back here, it's a little bit lighter. And as I come forward, this is going to kind of come forward here. And I know there's boats in there and there's buildings in there, but I'm not worried about that at first. I'm just worried about the outer edge. And I will get the details later. I'll go in there and get the details of what it is. I'm just getting the outer edge of those, those shapes. The rest, if you look on the value study, that's just a dark. That has to be a dark. It has to be a dark. No lights in there. No lights, no the yellows, nothing in there. You can put a little yellow in there, but it has to be your dark. That's the part of the value study that says, you know, you have to make that dark. Otherwise you don't get the value pattern right. And then it doesn't work. And here we go. I'm just going to cross. And I know a lot of times you're thinking, wow, that's really ugly colors. It almost like mud, but it's what the scene looks like. The scene is an overcast kind of day. Um, there is a little bit of warmth in there uh, and the picture is like orangey. It could have been a sunset, but I'm making it more like an overcast kind of day, kind of gloomy. And so if you want to get kind of mood, you have to make the mood. It didn't work this afternoon because I didn't get the right mood. This was this mood was too vibrant. I mean, if you want to make it more vibrant and blue, blue water, that's cool. You know, but I was not, I didn't get the mood that I saw in the photograph. The reason I wanted to paint it was this mood. And I wanted to show people how to get that mood. And it definitely didn't do it with the blue. <laughs> that didn't work. Sorry, sorry, people from Libertyville. But everybody did a pretty decent job. It was a little hard because it is a little complicated, a little bit more complicated a painting than I normally shouldn't have started with that the get-go right out of the box and come back to to painting but we've been doing some pretty neat neat paintings i saw this online and so i thought ah, we gotta do this one hey jill from syracuse thanks for stopping by so here I think I'm going to be up near, um, near Syracuse. I'm going to be doing a, at the Thousand Islands, I'm going to be doing a workshop. I think it's still happening. I have to get in contact with them, but I think that's still happening in August. So here, that's too light, but I'm just putting water down with any pigment. I'm just putting it down so I can get in there and, um, get the water in there. And then I'm going to, then I'm going to play around with the edges. You, know, you can always put down water and with the objects and then later on and that's too warm that's uh, that got that got too warm over there so i'm going to take that down a little bit and put a little bit more of the blue in that area so i'll put a little bit more blue in that area because that's farther back remember that's back and as this comes forward we can get warmer and we got to get it darker that's just not dark enough right here i mean look at and we don't, we're not doing our darks completely yet. So I can do a little bit of darker parts in that, but I want to get closer to the dark than I did with the light. Cause this is the dark area. So I just want to keep it away from the light area. It can't be as light as light area. So it's gotta be darker. So I want to make most of it pretty dark. And then later on, I'll do the dark darks, the details, details you put in when it's really dark, the darks create the details basically down here, a nice warmth in there. And what's in there? I don't know. There's a bunch of homes over there and there's a, there's probably a couple of pillars here or posts and stuff. And there's a boat over here and throw some nice colors in there. Some nice warms and cools and cools more over here. Here, put a couple of cools over there. And depending on what your TV or your computer or your phone is set at, you know, a lot of times um, it doesn't look the same as what I'm doing. So I, I apologize for that because it's just something that with the John Klein classes, it, you don't see exactly what color I'm using. You don't see exactly what I'm using for the value because it all depends on what your um, TV or whatever your monitor is set at. 
And same thing with the volume. We get a uh, the one one week I had a real problem with the volume, but a lot of times it's also you have to look at your machine and see what the what you're at set at. All right, so that's going to be the background. I'm going to let that dry. And now let's go into this and just work my way forward. Work my way right into there. So now this is too big a brush for this now because those are people back there. So I'm going to take, I like my flats because, you know, I have a lot of straight lines and I, I love the flats for the fact that I can just, like the body right here, there's a couple of bodies. I can just do like the shoulder in one brush stroke. Maybe put a little color in this part now so that, because it's coming a little bit closer. So I'm just going to fake a little bit of David Dabbs, the David Dabbs guys in here. And then same thing with this guy. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter than this back there. And that's going to dry 10% lighter. Always remember, everything dries 10% lighter. And so I'm just going to come around here. And I'm using a lot of grays. So yes, I am using a lot of grays. That's what I was talking about in the beginning, that I'm going to use the grays and kind of a violet -y to yellows. That's going to be more or less what the grays and the, are going to be towards the gray or towards the violet. Boy, I lost all my line work in there, didn't I? Wow. A little bit different from this afternoon, but once you do it once, you kind of know what you did wrong. And so sometimes it's good if you're going to be doing a lot of painting, you're doing the big ones in the studio, do a little short one like this first. It'll give you all the options of what you need to do later on. I know people, artists like Andy Evanson, they, what they do is they do a, a value study with paint and or something to do with markers. And then you can get a... Um, the whole thing kind of like you painted it beforehand. Here's this boat and then there, a couple people in here. And I know it's really ugly colors right there, but you can always pop them in. Like once it's wet like this, now I'm going to pop it in and put a little bit of red in the background here. I just have to get the outer edge and leaving a little bit of white where I need the light. I could put like maskoid in there first before you do that, but I always decide to um, try to do without the maskoid because a lot of times if you do the maskoid, it gets a little bit too sharp and too hard edged. There's a little bit of. All right, so there we have some people. And now we're going to this lady here. And so we're coloring her first in the mediums and light colors. We're not going to dark yet. This is dark, but it's not my darkest darks yet. It's going to be dark. The darker ones are going to create shapes. Now I did create shapes here because that's the whole thing is a shape. But when I get in there, I'll get details of those shapes. And same thing here. I'm going to put in colors first. I'm coloring it with middle tones and lights. I'm not doing darks. I'm just going to put, I want to do big washes. So they get that really cool look of big washes. Watercolor, the best thing about watercolor is getting those beautiful, you know, put down the water and just let things float. You know, those white kind of washes are so great. And so the bigger you can make the wash, the better. And then you can float a bunch of pigment in there. So like her top was right into the this area. And her top is a little bit lighter in the thing. And I made it this orange, which, ugh. <laughs> I just, I guess you can see, I don't really like this painting that much. <laughs> but um, that, I'm not going to make it orange this time. Definitely not going to make it orange. I'm gonna just going to make it, it's a white top she has on. And, um, and it's flowered. I'm not going to put the flowers in. I don't think it just didn't somehow, I don't know. It doesn't look right to me or so I'm going to make this one like it's white and then have a reflection. So there's the violets and I can put a little warmth in that violet, make it more warm violet, red, but you see how I let things just float around in there and I'm doing the whole area. This whole area is all a bunch of things, but I'm putting it all together. Now her face, I don't want to put the purple in her face, though you could, I mean, cause it's going to be reflecting in there, but I'm going to first start out with more of a flesh tone and then you can put other colors into the flesh tone, but first start out with the flesh tone and then you can put shadow on top of that or the hair is really dark, but I'm not going to do the really dark part of the hair yet because it's not time yet. I'm just putting colors. So that's going to be a little bit lighter here. And so then I, I put the lights in first. Now her pants were darker in the photo and I took away the engine. So that's all together. I'm just trying to make these things come together as, as one big wash and getting my colors scheme in there and getting some nice colors in there. I know there's like watermelons in this thing and she's selling some kind of stuff. 
I put two baskets in here. So I'm just going to make the baskets like warm, warm, yellowy orange type of thing. This little crate here, I think it's a, I don't know, a box, like a, a little box. I'm going to make that red because red really makes you look at that area. So I'm going to go right over this dark part. And then the watermelons are green. So I'm not going to go with a bright, bright green because then it would just pop out too much. And they're not that important that you have to put them. I'm just going to get them a little bit, you know, like a an earthy, light green. And again, you know, as I put it right into the legs, I try to paint through things. Don't paint, ar don't paint around and do pieces. Paint big areas. That's why you get that all that beautiful floating pigment. Get that beautiful floating pigment in there. And so we'll go through here. Maybe this will be red, like there's uh, tomatoes in there. And here. And, you know, I'm not even looking at the photo. Once I get going here, I hardly even look at the photo anymore because I kind of um, know the value study. I've done it uh, now twice now, this thing. So this is my second time. So I kind of know what I just want to get to make it look pretty decent. And a lot of the stuff you just fake because I don't know what all that stuff is in there. You can't see it in the photograph either. That's a come. It's good to take your own photographs when you're painting and do your own things because you took the picture and you know what was there and you have more an idea. And also you'll be taking pictures of stuff that you know and love. And that's what you have to paint anyways. You always got to paint stuff that you know and love. So there now we got the middle tone dark. See, it's the reflection is going to be darker. The boat there is going to be darker. I'm just putting my colors in. Now it's not popping out enough. So for color wise, so I'm just going to dump a little bit of color in here. The side of the boat, even though the boat is probably not red, it could reflect the warmth in the sky. So you can, you can still put red in there. It's going to be so dark anyways later that you won't even tell what color it is. So how much pigment do you have in your brush? How much pigment do you put down into that water? Control it. Now here's a hard edge because why? Because it's dry. That area is dry and I'm getting that edge. So if you want to see it closer up, you can see this. But see how the hard edge is because it's dry and um, a lot of floating pigment, a lot of floating pigment. And um, all right. So how much time do we have here? We started at 6.30. That means we go to 7.30, right? we got a half hour left. So let's keep on going with um, right down here. And just get her pants in there. Got some shoes. There's gonna be stuff laying around down here and there's little lines and stuff. And, and actually I'm gonna put a little bit of the color of the warmth of the yellow warmth in there too. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there just to get it to look, excuse me, like the rest of the painting. All right, so there we have that. I'm gonna check to see if this is dry enough to go back over. I might as well get that um, this is dry for the petals so now this is detail now so we pretty much got our lights and middle tones all done now so this is step um, number you know we got the light we got the um, colors and we got the light and a little bit of mid tones and so now we go to our darks this is the last stage this is where you put in details and you start picturing things like like the oars and the and her hair and boats and stuff and you get them to look like what they are Right now we just put color down so we can see what the color scheme is going to be and your darks can be the same colors but just richer richer and then you get a hard edge for these paddles they're pretty dark in the picture they're almost black like so i'm going to put a nice dark um, color together a little purple a little red what was i using purple and yellow so earth tone basically so here i'm going to go and i'm just going to go in here and take spend more time too because now when i'm putting on these hard edges it means something. It has to look like something. It has to look like a paddle. And so even though I'm doing this like small and kind of tenderly and trying to make the line straight, that doesn't mean I don't have to float pigment in there too. Because just one color like this is just kind of ugly, one solid color. So what's down here is a little bit of yellow, right? And a little bit of orange. So why not throw a little bit of that reflecting into there right now, right in the get-go? Just put yellow 
You can put it nice and thick and just kind of float it in there. Maybe the red can be up there too, floating in that little, I mean, it's just a line, but you can float colors in there from things that are around that area. I'm just gonna go up here. I'm just gonna put this in there like that. If you guys wanna ask questions, I do have it up there. I can see the questions. So if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, there's not many people, so I and I can I, I can actually look up today. Usually on Saturdays, it's pretty pretty crazy, but it's a nice calming here today tonight. And so if you do have a question, just put it up there. I may find it. <laughs> I'll look up up every once in a while. And so here we're going to go a little dark, nice and crisp. Look how crisp it is when you. I mean, it's important that I get crisp lines now when I get in there and. Spend a little bit more time and usually this is the part of the, the demo that it's probably not as fun to watch because i'm sitting there doing little details and that's just not as much fun as doing these big washes that just splatter all over the place and, and so now i probably should use a little bit more of the of the oh here it is hold on one second i just gotta put my image so i can see what i'm painting So there's a little darks in there. Oh, that's not dry. Let's go into the building. So I think that buildings now are pretty much dry. And always use the back of your hand to touch it to make sure it's dry. Don't use the front if you got oils on your hand. And oil and watercolor do not mix. So let's go in the back now. And so the light basically is coming right down the middle here. And so what I want to do is I want to make the side of the buildings that are facing this way lighter and the ones that are facing towards me would be in the dark, right? So I'm just going to keep that in mind and then I just kind of go by that. Even if it's not like that in the photo, I'm going to go by that because that's what I decided. I decided that the light's coming from the back. It's going to hit anything that's on the side, you're going to see lighter and anything that's facing towards me will be darker. And when I say darker, I don't mean like really, really dark. Especially not in this area back here, because this is more, this back here is farther away. So there, I'm just going to use lighter colors, lighter values, just to get an idea of what's going on back there. And if we know it's buildings, I mean, I, we're smart enough to know that it's buildings. Our mind sees this, and you've been to places that are have a boat, and there's a lake or whatever, and that looks like a boat and that looks like a building. So your mind just says, yeah, that, that must, that must be like a, a bunch of boats and a bunch of buildings back there. Right. It automatically does that. You don't even think about it. It already knows that that's buildings. And so I'm just going to give it a little bit more detail so it can say, yep. See, I told you so. So it's like, you don't have to copy to a T like the photograph though. You can, I mean, I have some students ever that, that paint very tight. And there's nothing wrong with painting really tight and making it look just like, you know, the object that it is almost like a photograph. You know, it's not, it's not a bad thing. You don't have to, you know, shy away. It's, it's, it, there's a lot of people doing, it. there's a lot of people winning awards with that kind of style too. It's just a little bit harder. I, I can't really um, do that kind of style because I am very impatient. <laughs> I don't have the um, patience to do a lot of all this little stuff in there. I just want to get it done. I'm just like, I'm the kind of artist that likes impression of this. And then it looks like kind of like it. That's really good enough for me. So here, as I'm going towards this way, I'm also getting a little bit darker, getting a little bit darker as I go over this direction because that's farther back. So I'm not going to get as much of that darkness. I'm going to get more of the aerial perspective or atmospheric perspective is what I, I like to call it. So put a couple of windows in here and you notice I'm using the quarter inch brush because it's like my, it's my, um, window brush it goes in there really easily to make windows. And now I, I can see a little bit of the line work, but not, not great, but you know, I'm just going to use what I think I see it there and just make things up, you know, and there's going to be roofs. There's going to be windows. There's going to be a door, you know, we know that is part of it. So you just make it up. You don't have to copy it exactly if you don't want to. That's the way I fake things out. I just kind of. And see how it's getting a little darker, darker, darker over here. It's going to be really dark. We're going to have some really dark things over here. I'm going to go in there and get some nice crisp darks in here. 
by putting in these darks, what you get is this makes this brighter. And so that's why you make it dark. So that the other parts get lighter and brighter. The lights get really bright and this will have a really great con contrast in it. Let's go more. This is my peach black, my violet. And I'm just going to put like where the water hits the, hits the buildings or the deck or whatever the pier. That's going to be a little dark right there. Underneath the thing, and maybe this is a window again. And I, I don't want to give this too much detail either, because the more detail I put back here, that means I got to double it up here. You can't put that much up back here because it's not the center of interest. Otherwise, my eyes are going to go over there way too much, and then I'm stuck with having to make this like photographic. Jill asks, am I using a set palette tonight or just drawing from everything? I'm kind of drawing from everything. Oh, actually, I am kind of drawing from um, the, the violets and the yellows pretty much. Um, um, I kind of made that my go-to colors, my violets and my yellows. But that doesn't mean I don't go into other colors too. I, I tend to go into all the colors. But prominently, I go into the purples and violets because it's what's on the palette when I started. And so now I'm going to just keep on going with that. Carol asked why I choose this photo. Um, <laughs> that was a good question. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just I ran across it and I just liked it. And um, yeah, it was not it's not the easiest one. I, I'm sorry to those of you that have just started with me. <laughs> um, it's definitely not uh, easiest, but um, I just like the reflections. I like the whole the whole look of it. it really was um, appealing. I like boat scenes, anyways. And so, but next week will be a much uh, much easier painting next Thursday. And so. Wait for next Thursday if you don't want to paint this one. This one's a little bit tougher. I know it's a little tougher, but it'll be fun. Give it a give it a shot. Try it out. You don't have to make. You can make it just a regular fisherman in there too. You don't have to make it. Um, maybe it looks like it's um, somewhere close by <laughs> by here. It could be down here in McHenry. We have the river. Maybe it's down by the river over there. Now I'm putting in reflections. Bring it down more and more. And a lot of these, you know, reflections are really tiny little waves. You know, the, the waves are what's causing the reflections to go back and forth like this. So basically the reflections are waves. And so you can just put them in and they did kind of dissipate, but you can put a few in here and there. There's a reason why you know the, they look that way, the way they do it because the wave hits the one part of it and the one part reflects the sky and the one part reflects you and one part reflects the buildings right above it. And if you like to do paintings of water, get out there and look at it and sketch it and draw it and take a lot of photographs of it. I mean, I, I grew up and I worked at a marina and I love boats and I always had had a boat. And so anything with boats in it, I love. It's just something that and I, like, I know how to do them now to paint them because of all the time being around them and and the reflections. And I just look, I just look and I study it, study what the reflection does. At night, if you have, see a light in the distance, it goes all the way from the top, all the way down to your feet, the reflection. It's pretty interesting. All right, so that's almost going to be pretty much the background. How much time do we have here? We got 8.13, half an hour still. I mean, 15 minutes. Well, let's get this a little bit darker here. Get our reflection in here. Now, what color should that reflection be? It should be the yellowish orange first. Because that's what the color of the water is. So you make that first. And then you can pick up the colors from the person in there. Yeah. Eve says, yeah, placing figures in a scene can be challenging. Yes, it is. It's a little tough to place them in. And... Um, if you're not good at drawing, and then it's even harder because then you're kind of whatever the photograph is, it better be looking good. Because if it's not, then you're going by a photograph that maybe looks kind of weird and the person standing there weird, or there's a motor in front of them. And if you don't know how to do it on your own without the photo, or photo then you can have it can be very challenging. Definitely can be very challenging. But as you advance and as you learn how to draw and stuff, it becomes easier and easier. 
and you realize that you need to simplify, the best thing to do is always simplify big areas and shapes and all that stuff. Simplifying, simplifying. And just going down, making these waves. These are just the waves in there. And there, this is, I call a tint of color. There's hardly any color in my brush. It's all mostly water. So it looks really kind of dark right now when I'm putting these in, but they are going to dry really light. But in, in, in the same time, it'll give me the look of, of waves. Right through there. I got a little green in there. I'm not sure how I got that green in there, but I'm going to make this boat a little bit of warmth right there. And when I, I always say like warmth or cools, just use colors that are warm. It could be, it could be a red, it could be an orange, it could be a, um, you know, a purple. Those are warm colors. So just use any color. Uh, use the colors that you like. I've always, people always ask what exact color is that? And I'll tell you, but you're going to like a different color. Most people like different colors than me. And so use the colors that you totally love and makes it makes painting so much more fun when you use things that you like and colors that you like. And when you end up finishing the painting, it'll start looking really nice. So now I'm going to get the darks in here. I'm going to just try to figure out what's going on in here. And this is the side of the boat. Here's the oar. There's her hand, which I'll make a different color later. Here I'll make something with a cross. Then there's these little, I got negative paint of little ribs in the boat because it's dark inside there. And so I'm just going to take a dark color. And no matter how small these things are, you can still dump other colors in there besides what you're just using this one wash. I can go in now and maybe grab a little orange and just kind of poke it and it'll, it'll kind of make it look like it's shiny in there. Not shiny, but kind of glows. And I want this to glow. This is the part I want to glow. I mean, she is more important uh, of this painting. This is the important part right here. This is my center of interest. So I need to make it glow and look great. So whatever I can do to enhance the colors, the values, the contrast, the drawing has to be right on. I'm just going to go back here. And that was, that's a permanent violet I use. And again, what I start out with is not a lot of times what I end up with. I start out with any a lot of times that I use a lot of color and I just wet it. And then I come back and I grab another color and I float it right on top. Right on top. And it doesn't matter if it's light or dark or what you're using. It's, as long as you're floating it, it's going to look... Fine. It's going to look great, actually. And so make the edges dark, nice and dark right there. I do have masking fluid on this on her side to make the sun look like it's hitting that side. Even though there's really not sunlight in this, it's just a, like a, a casted light. A few darks here. This side I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. Just put some orange and yellows. Put that in there. And now her, let's get into her. And so I'm going to use a small round because I want to do her hair. And so I have to use something that has a nice point to it, a single point. So I can get in there closely and just get the single point. And actually this time I'm going to put on some glasses too, because that helps a little bit when you're putting on glasses. So trying to come in here, get this dark. There's her hair. And see now that it's just it's just hair, right? It's just one color. And again, what do I do? I put other colors in there. Not because her hair has red in it, it's because there's maybe something around her. Maybe she's wearing a red top. Maybe she's got whatever. It's gonna reflect. And maybe the, the sunlight, because it's kind of orangey, we'll put a little orange in there because that's what is around the area. I'm gonna do the pants a little bit darker. So I'm just going to kind of go in here and again, it doesn't matter what I start out with with the color. It's what I put on the top of that. And you're probably going to hear some music. Somebody's playing music outside. <laughs> so I'm not sure if it's picking it up. <laughs> but I guess it's the evening so we can also have music playing. There we go. Right, put a little bit of cool color in there too. So 
I guess Thursday there may be music playing <laughs> during the, during the demos. Uh, if you guys can hear it, but I can hear it. See, I'm just putting in details now. These are details, and it's kind of, I'm sure, boring to watch the detail because you're just doing, I'm going in there, and here's a, like the shape of a watermelon and making it round. And, and um, so it's just, it's a little bit more time consuming because you got to kind of go in and actually make something look like something. And, and if you don't have patience, like I don't have patience, then it's, that's, this is the tough part. This is the part that I don't like as much. <laughs> but it's okay. I mean, it's fine. And so now. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else we got here? We got some lines here. Oh, I forgot. There's a park out there, and they do Thursday um, concerts. <laughs> That's what it is. They do Thursday concerts out in the park outside my door. <laughs> So that's good. That's good to know. So now I'm throwing shadow so that this, the light's coming this way. So I'm throwing shadow on this side. And if you want to put like a, a um, pattern on there, do it after you get the, the, the form done. Do the form first and then put the, put the pattern on afterwards. Okay, about 10 minutes left. And so what do we do? We do the water. We just get in there and get some of the water, get the, um, the reflection. And so the, again, the reflection is the color of the water first. And it's kind of a uh, purpley, um, orangey yellow, right? So that's what I got to go with first to make it a little bit darker. But I'm going to make it pretty dark closer to the boat because it, it would be darker closer to the boat. And it's all going to be hard edge this time. Before it was... It was a soft edge. Now we're going hard, we're going hard edged. And we're going to leave some spaces available so that it looks like you can still see the soft edges because you're going to get both. You're going to get reflections that are hard edged and the soft edged ones. And then um, if you look at the photo, the photo has like the, has the reflections going downwards because it's moving forward. And um, I'm not going to do that. I'm not sure why, because I feel like I, I just want to get a reflection more than is that the movement of the of the scene it makes it kind of look like she's going uphill and so i don't like the lines going this way and to let water look flat you got to work it back and forth like this horizontally so i'm going to make my reflections horizontally but i can still do like these little horizontals but make them go sideways a little bit like this instead of going down with my brush because that will make it look not horizontal the um the water doesn't lay flat then I just learned that through just trial and error when you're doing reflections and it just, and I know it looks like that in the photo, but sometimes you can't trust the photo for it as, cause you're the artist and you have to make it look like a painting and some, it's not going to be a photograph. And so you have to just do things to make it look better than the photograph. Cindy asks, what's next Thursday? If you guys want to give me um, suggestions of what you'd like to see painted, please do that here. You know, if you think of something that you want to see me um, demonstrate, please put them down there. I'd like to see what you guys want me to, to paint. Well, what are you having problems with? What colors are you having problems with? What scenes are you having problems with? What do you want to see um, painted or what do you want to paint? Just let me know and I'll look. I may do it. I may not. You know, just put it out there. Put it out there and just um, just ask for it and you may get it. So just let me know what you guys want to paint and I will see if I can get to those things. I've been painting now and doing teaching classes, gosh, my whole life, it seems like, and it's so hard to know what everybody likes, but sometimes I've, I've run out of ideas. <laughs> I've done a lot of paintings with a lot of classes and it comes to a point where it's like, Ooh, what else can I paint? What else is different or what else do I know that, that people want? So definitely, um, give me suggestions of what you want to see painted and what problems you're having with painting and how, what I can do to help you with certain type of paintings or night scenes. I was maybe doing, I was going to do a night scene. Um, what was I going to do a night scene? Oh, I had a night scene yesterday for my daily paintings. 
but um, I was thinking maybe I'll do a night scene. Okay, so we got this. Come down here. And see how I'm making my um, the values in the water very, very dark and hard edge, but they're particular waves that are reflecting the boat and they're hard edged and that's okay. I can still put these colors in there, but not now. Later when when um, I get this down first. I gotta get the darks in there first and the color of the water first before I can start putting those other colors in there. Because they're more important to make it look like a wave if I use the color that's there. Once I start um, messing around with putting that in there, um, it, it'll work, but I first have to get the, the other colors in there. And this will be up online. This will be posted online again later. And so you, it gives you time. You can always um, ask questions later too, if you watch it again, or if you're, if you're gonna paint along with it and you have questions while you're painting it, put them up there. I, I'll go back every once in a while and look and see if there's any, and actually it tells me when people ask questions anyways, it'll send me an email saying that somebody asked a question on YouTube. That's the reason I'm also going on YouTube. There's a lot more things you can do on YouTube that you can't do on Facebook with your videos. And so that's where we're, that's why we're kind of came to YouTube. I'll put a couple of little circles here. If you also see something that um, I'm not getting, or if you're, the sound is not loud enough, or please let me know. Just let me know. I, I may be able to fix it. I mean that. But um, anything you see that you want to change or you think that something's wrong, please let me know. I'll try to try to get to it. Can't always guarantee, but. Um, Little dots here. Now this part over here, I kind of like these things in. So that's the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of that that uh, middle tone of those waves back on this side. A little bit more yellow in there, and then we're pretty much almost done. Pretty loud. Can you guys hear that? <laughs> Can you guys hear that? Maybe I'm just imagining this face in my head. So a little bit of, you know, little, little waves and also can get rid of that little bit of um, scumminess I did with the, with the needle rubber eraser. I went over that. more little reflections here. This corner may be a little bit darker. Because then you can get the hard edged waves in too. See how I'm getting hard edged waves. And one thing about waves, there's no faking waves. You have to if you put you know you gotta put them in. <laughs> it's like bricks. You can't just have a few if you're gonna make it look like really wavy, you gotta put them all in. It just it's just a time consuming thing. You just gotta put them all in. If it's really ripply, you know, it's just you can put a few of them in to make it look kind of ripply, but in the center of interest, you got to put them all in. Just make it, it looks more real that way. It looks like we need some up here, a little bit darker. I haven't gotten away from it either. Sometimes it's good to get away from a, sec from a second and just look at it with a fresh eye. But since I do these so quick, a lot of times I don't get that chance, and so I'll see it afterwards. So a lot of times I'll do a little things afterwards too, just to kind of get it. If I miss something while I'm doing a demo. Okay, last thing. I'll take the mask right off. Take the mask right off there, and our back here. Take an indie rubber eraser, and of course it's too thick, so it's ripping a little bit of the paper. You got to watch this paper, this Stonehenge. Um, it's kind of soft, and so it will rip some of the paper. This will be okay because I can get it off and I can I gotta put some other color back in there so that it doesn't I didn't make it dark enough in that area so I'm just gonna put a yellow on this edge here. Maybe the hair clip can be that color. Or I'll make it violet. A little bit of violet in here.
down here. All right, I think that is about it. Darker right there. Hold on, one more thing, one more thing, sorry. We're over, oh no, no, it's actually 7.30 right now. <laughs> so there we go. All right, let's stop right there. Let me take off the tape to show you what it looks like. And um, that was fun. Hope you enjoy it on Thursdays. Hope it's a little bit more fun. Sorry, I can't do them on Saturday mornings again. I know some of you can only do them on Saturday mornings, but unfortunately I can't. <laughs> so here we have it without the masking tape on. And again, when you're ripping the masking tape off, always go away from the paper. See, I'm pulling it this way. That way you don't rip anything. After all that time, after all that hard work, you don't want to rip anything. So, let's see what it looks like. There we go. Nice. All right. So next week, please give me some um, give me some ideas. What do you, what do you want to paint? Let me know. And um, yeah, so let me know. Let me take my glasses off. Let me know what you want to paint next week. And so um, I'll maybe get it in there. You never know. Um, we'll, let's see what we can do. We'll put it in there and um, uh, it could be a nice scene, but I'm not sure. But again, give me some ideas. And Thursdays and tell your friends, tell your friends if they want to see it and um, paint along. And actually, if you do um, paint it, let me see it. Send it to me on um, Facebook or email it to me. And I'll put it out there or just put it on your Facebook page. I'd love to see what you're doing. All right, guys, thanks a lot again for meeting with me on Thursday. And I will talk to you next Thursday. All right, see you later, guys.